Well, I'm going to take uh, to talk a, a, sub, a subject quite different, but it is the results of my last research. When I started my studies in the secret archives of the Holy Office of the Inquisition and the New Christians, I did not know what, was, what I was going to find. Every research is a mystery, and we never know where we are going to arrive. In the last few years, Brazilian historiography is starting to understand that we cannot write the history of Brazil without the Jews. But we still don't understand the complexity of all this Marano question. The Brazilian historiography keep themselves un uh, still attached to the study of the inquisitorial institution, its functioning, its structure, its methods, and its organization. But where, where are the Jews? There are no deeper studies that approach the Marrano's mentality, his sensibility, his feelings, his long sorrows. Not knowing the whole trage trajectory of the Jews in the diaspora, their lives, their cruel experiences, and the complexity of their lives. We cannot write, not even the history of the Baranos. To understand this fantastic history of the Bnei Anusim in Brazil, we need to go back to its origin. We have to know how this history of the converted Jews developed a story of 500 years. It is not easy to tell. The forced conversion of all the Jews from Portugal to Catholicism was the greatest catastrophe that happened to the Sephardi Jews during 2,000 years. The king of Portugal, Don João II, he did not take away from the Jews only their names. He took away the language, the books, the traditions, he took away their rituals, their synagogues, their schools, and their cemeteries. He even took away their children. No more family names, no more identity. The Jews converted remained with nothing, and they became nothing. Half a century after the conversion, a court of the Holy Office of the Inquisition was established in Portugal. The documents say clearly that it was a court, a tribunal, to persecute and punish the Jews who did not obey the law of the church. It was 
specifically created for the Jews. We cannot uh, misunderstand it because many times we say, well, there were also uh, homosexuals, there were also <coughs> uh, witchcraft and so many other uh, heretical propositions. There were other reasons to uh, arrest a Portuguese. But it was minimum. It was created for the Jews. And this is in the documents, clearly. It was not created for heretics. It was not created for Portuguese who were heretics. No, it was created for the Jews. And the Jews were the only people that I know in the world who had a tribunal, a court, only for himself. With the, with the court started for the Sephardi Jews, I call it the era of torture. And the famous autos de fe started also. I have already mentioned that Maranism is a complex and paradoxical phenomenon. During centuries, it was intimately related to crypto-Judaism, the secret practice of, uh, of, of the Jewish religion. To understand the problem of the Bnei Anusim, which is the main reason of this conference, we must know how this topic involved, excuse me, evolved, evolved until nowadays. It's important to know about the personality of the converted Jew and the Maranos who lived 300 years in Brazil among different cultures and ethnic groups, they were completely different from the Ashkenazi and the Sephardi Jews before the conversion. As I say, the forced conversion shaped a new man. A man who learned to fight and to kill. An adventurer and a revolutionary. An example is what we call Bandeirantes, who were the destroyers of the missions, of the missions of the Jesuit missions, and they were the first to find the gold mines and colonize a city in the middle of the jungle. Until very recently, we did not know that the Bandirantes were Jews. They fill up our all books in the Brazilian history. They are the Avenue of Bandeirantes, the Road of the Bandeirantes, the Streets of Bandeirantes. But nobody knew that they were Jews. But now we have proofs of their Judaism. When a Jesuit asked one of the Bandeirantes, what law gave you the right to kill us? He answered, the law that God gave to Moses. The Baterantes were violent men. They killed the Jesuit, destroyed their churches, they bro broke, break their holy images. They hated the Jesuits because they were the representative of the Inquisition in America. 
the, the Jesuits from the missions were commissioners of the Inquisition of Lima. The Bandeirantes wanted to implement in Sao Paulo an independent republic, democratic and anti-clerical. They were against the king of Portugal, Don Juan IV. But they had another candidate who they believed had the right to the crown of Portugal. But this candidate was refused by a great part of the Portuguese people because he was a Jew. And his name, Don Antonio Prior de Crato. This history is still not known. It is, we're starting now to do this research because it's very interesting that the Bandeirantes from Sao Paulo and the Portuguese Jews who went to England and the Jews who were in Amsterdam, they all had the same ideal. They wanted Prior de Crato to be the king of Portugal. They had, there was a complot between Sao Paulo, England, and Amsterdam. They wanted the Jew for a king. There were three tribunals in Spanish America. One of them, the Tribunal of Lima, massacrated the Jews. Jewish community because they were rich merchants and the Inquisition could confiscate their fortunes. It was a barbarian act. They burned at the stake poets and writers and businessmen. And I want to say also a few words about the modern concept of Maranism. The Maranism changed in the last years. The concept of Maranism changed. In the last few years, there has been a high interest in the study of the mentality of the Marano. The study of the Maranism went beyond the studies of the crypto-Judaism. Because in, uh, and, uh, it became, Maranism became interdisciplinary. It crossed from the field of history to the field of philosophy, anthropology, psychology, and psychoanalysis. Richard Popkin, he attributes the origin of modern skepticism to the religious controversies of the Maranos. That's the origin of skepticism today. And mainly, it was a movement in the 17th century that opened the way to reject both religious religions, Catholicism and Judaism. We have uh, psychoanalysts like Antonio Damasio and Jean-Pierre Winter, who, who are psychoanalysts. We have a philosopher like Derrida, Jacques Derrida, uh, we have Edgar Morin, a philosopher also. Uh, we have uh, Jacques Abensur, a French philosopher. They all take care and are now preoccupied with the 
changing of modernism. And so it's interesting, but, but it's a too long uh, talk, that uh, those philosophers and psychoanalysts, they have an interpretation of modernism that put Montaigne as a Marano, where Spinoza is already considered by many as a Marano. And there are many thinkers. He, he, uh, Edgar Morin goes still Freud as a Marano, because Marano is not anymore the secret Jew like it was 20 years ago. A Marano is a feeling, is a personality. It's a way of seeing the world. It became in a different, it, it, it has now, today a different sense. And there are many books written today by philosophers and psychoanalysts about Maranism. We have Miguel Abensur, who is a French philosopher. He asked a question. Can we speak of a Marano fluctu to act to enemy? I'm going to tell you, fluctu to act to enemy is the anxiety between belonging and not belonging. The spirit afloat between the desire and the doubt. On one hand, the Marano wants anxious to integrate into Jewish community. But on the other side, he hesitates and we see in the documents that many times this return is impossible. Spinoza analyzes the Marano soul and says that in certain aspects the Marano soul can be considered a fluctu actu animi. He uses these Latin words and it means a state of the spirit that is born from two affections that contradict each one other. The soul is in a great confusion. The soul does not know anymore what she loves and what she hates. And it falls in a painful despair. Well, time changed. The court of the Inquisition closed its doors after being active for 300 years. with torture, with killing, and burning the Jews. In Brazil, only converted had death penalty. Not anyone else. And there were other people arrested. There were other, other people in jail, uh, heretics. No one had death penalty, only the Jews. Absolute silence fell over the tragic story of the new Christians. The world thought that once they stopped the persecution, the problem of the new Christian was finished, no more secret Jews. In the 19th century, Portuguese authors left us some scientific writings, very few, and also some romances denouncing also the Pope's economic interest in the introduction of the Inquisition in Portugal. 
I have to finish. I have to finish well. To finish this brief interlude about this unfinished Jewish history, I want to remember that it will take many years to read the thousands of pages of these most tragic Jewish lives. Words will never be able to describe it. I will give you a curious example. The well-known Portuguese poet, considered one of the greatest poets in the 20th century, Fernando Pessoa, many people know him, not only the Brazilians. Fernando Pessoa knew that he was of Jewish origin, he knew. But he does knew, he does know that Motus's family members died in the fire of the Inquisition. This he didn't know because they did not give up their Jewishness. I have the trials of many members of his family. One of his ancestors lived in Brazil, and one day he felt homesick from the village where he spent his childhood, and he went back to Portugal. Well, he was arrested, was tortured, and was burned at the stake. Levinas, the Jewish philosopher, he says, curiously, that everything in this world is connected. If so, maybe unconsciously, Fernando Pessoa was inspired by the lives of his ancestors when he wrote these verses. Farewell, farewell, farewell to all the people who did not come to say goodbye. My family, only abstract and Possible. Farewell today. Farewell life. Farewell life. Thank you.